Okay, without further ado, you. Me, me, how can I begin? Um, <laughs> where should I begin? Tell a little bit about myself. From the beginning, yes. From the beginning, oh, we don't have enough time for all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Mary Mamalidi, and I am a culinary expert on some uh, of AMI, Accessible Media Inc. shows. Um, I am a contributor on Kelly and Company. I cook, love food, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, I have retinitis pigmentosa. So I'm going to jump back just a little bit just to give you a quick background about me, who I am, and how I ended up where I am today. So I was a financial analyst who turned cook. So, and I love saying this line because it's like, I went from counting beans to cooking them. I know, cheesy, cheesy joke, but it's, it's <laughs> And it's um, never the other way around, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, never. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> my eye condition progressed. And what ended up happening was I could no longer, I hid this for a long time. It's a long story why I did. A lot of people do, um, and a lot of people don't. It's just something that I did. And when I realized that um, I couldn't do my job, I couldn't do what I was doing, it was causing me a lot of strain, a lot of um, headaches, and I felt like I was living a lie. I felt like I, was, I had that imposter syndrome, like I was living someone else's life, not my own. Um, so eventually I had to leave. Um, and doing that, making that decision was not easy. I basically, because the decision's made for me, it wasn't my choice. So it's accepting that I didn't have control in this and I had to leave. So I'm really giving you the, the short form here because <laughs> it's one of those things where I just, I started just diving into different things and different things to, to kind of um, make me feel better, try and forget about what is actually going on. And cooking happened to be one of those things. I've always loved cooking. But it was, it was something that I just never made time for after because I was always focused on this other career, which I thought was making me happy. Um, turns out it wasn't. Food actually helped save me because it was a place where I was able to just be myself. I didn't have to worry about, you know, someone walking in front of me and not seeing them. I didn't have to worry about um, missing a step. No one had to guide me in the kitchen. It was just me and the food, which was empowering and i think that's where i started finding that empowerment through food was cooking and realizing that i can do it on my own i can be creative um and there's always i mean who's angry when you eat food food is happiness food is is the way my family and i we've always expressed ourselves it was a it was an extension of it was a form of love and still is so that's how i'm doing what i'm doing hey, today daddy. No. <laughs> amazing and that's awesome because I feel the same way when I'm eating uh, or if I'm not eating I know I'm not happy so there I mean I can deduce it that way exactly uh, angry <laughs> <laughs> that is the term so how I mean so what, right now like what's the the thing that you're into in, in a sense of like you know more of the trends I know I just started with sous vides I don't know if you're into sous vides yes, yes but... I haven't I haven't gotten myself a sous vide thing uh, machine yet Ah, I haven't done it, but how have you been finding it? You Unbelievable. It? It's cooking of the future. You take the, this device, you put it in like a water bath yeah. and I, I don't like cooking with plastic a lot, but I'll take these steaks and I'll put them in plastic bags and, uh, you know, air gets sucked out. Then you put them in the sous vide for like two hours at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when you take them out, they're fully cooked, but not like the way you're used to because typically steaks there's a char on the outside um but then what you do is you get your barbecue up to 600 degrees yes. and you throw it in there for like 30 seconds it gives it a really good char and then when you cut into it it's like perfect perfect and but that's all i cook with it but see what if you're not comfortable with the barbecue exactly get a cast iron pan mm. i think jordan have you done that before i know jordan was actually talking to me about cooking a steak in a cast iron pan phenomenal if you do the sous vide and then you you sear it in the cast iron pan, it takes it to the next level. I would have to try that. Yeah, cool. Definitely. Definitely. So where where did you go from there? Once you figured out that you know cooking was something that helped you uh, in your journey, uh, what did you do from there? 
I just started recreating recipes that I loved. So things that weren't as healthy. I mean, I'm not by any means someone who's going to say that I am extremely health conscious with everything that I do because I do love my sugar. But, um, <laughs> and uh, I, I just think everything in moderation. So I took a lot of these Italian recipes that I had and I started converting them. Things that were meals that I grew up with and just adding a little, you know, removing a little bit of extra oil, adding in a little more of something else. Um, and then I just noticed people were asking, girlfriends of mine were asking for recipes. And um, I just said, oh, I'm gonna open up an Instagram account and I'll start posting them there. And surprisingly, it just started kind of building and taking off from there. And I realized, hmm, maybe I'll open up a blog, a website. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got into writing and, and recipe development and doing the whole thing. And it just kind of spiraled from there, um, which was just, but my love of food has always remained the same. It's always been consistent. Um, I get excited talking about food. I don't know if you guys can tell in my voice. I just, I love food. I think I could speak for everyone. I think everyone here loves food. I think that's why we're all here, uh, which is great. So um, once your your blog, you know, came to fruition, you have an Instagram uh, following that's that's sizable. Um, how did you make the move to to TV? Um, that started. I was. It was through social media through Twitter. Which one these clothes? Mm -hmm. wow. um, I basically just uh, started talking to uh, some wonderful people over at CNIB. Ah. And at the time, there was a competition. I don't know if anyone heard of it, Menu Matchup. And it was where we get paired up with sighted um, chefs or celebrity chefs, and we compete. And funny enough, I competed against Ramya, which is one of the Killing Company hosts. Uh -huh. And uh, I think a months later, I ended up being a contributor on Kelly and Company, not through that though, through something else. And Rami and I started laughing. We're like, oh, we're back together again. <laughs> but that's how I made the transition, was just competing in the competition and realized that I just, I love teaching and, and uh, experimenting through food. It's really funny how things turn out. Really uh, I, I'm reminded of MasterChef. I don't know what season it was, but I think her name is Christine. Christine. And yeah, and, and and she's actually back on Master Chef every now and again, like uh, profoundly blind, you know. And but she's like, you know, she was the winner of Master Chef, right? So that was a, a really cool thing to see. Um, so yeah, I mean, when it comes to accessibility in the kitchen, um, sorry, I heard something. You're having something that goes with it. Yeah. I, I believe there might be a couple people who are not on mute right now. Totally fine. It's the type of thing we expect on these uh, in in this forum, uh, but. Um, Jordan, are you with us right now? I am. I'm right here. So you're saying about the, the cast iron skillet earlier on. I mean, I, I wanted to just get your, your feedback on it. You've cooked a steak in a cast iron skillet, correct? All the time. Just did the other day. So do you actually put it in the oven? I mean, I, I, that's the whole thing about a cast iron skillet. You, you, you sear it first. If you have a thick enough steak, you've got to put it in the oven to finish cooking or else it'll be nice and otherwise it'll be raw in the middle because you want it really hot. Oh, okay. So um, I know with my, uh, my sous vide, it actually connects to my iPhone. Uh, my dad, who's got macular degeneration, he has the same one. Uh, and as you know, iPhones are really a, a cool way to connect to the devices around you when you're able to connect to them. Um, so for the sous vide, when he uses it, um, he's able to use voiceover to see how long the actual uh, unit is in there to read the, the, the temperature on the device to see how long uh, is left and how long he needs to use it. Are there any other accessibility tools that you use in the kitchen? Oh gosh, I had to, I had to think about this one because there are many and I wrote some down just so I don't forget them. <laughs> um, there are a lot of the, the tools that, a lot of the safety things that I like to talk about and share with everyone now is now this goes for anyone across the board. Novice cook, anyone who's cooked for a long time, tuck your knives away. So if you're, you have your work surface, if you're working with a cutting board and a knife, tuck the sharp end of the knife underneath the cutting board when you're not using it to avoid any accidents happening with your hands. That was one, that one I learned the hard way. Um, so not to, allow anyone, not to get anyone else down that path, tuck it under. Um, oh, stabilizing cutting boards. 
So if you, some people may know this, some may not. If you wet, um, just get a paper towel, damp paper towel, stretch it out on your countertop, wherever you're, wherever you're cutting, place your cutting board on top of that. It will definitely stabilize your cutting board and it won't move around while you're chopping. Same thing if you decide to use um, a rimmed baking sheet. So some people, so I'd suggest if you put a rimmed baking sheet on your work surface, put your cutting board inside the rimmed baking sheet. So this way, if you're chopping, let's say you're chopping carrots, um, anything that will roll, cucumbers that will roll away from you, <laughs> that rim of the pan will catch all. It's a catch all for you. Um, what else? Oh, um, something I use, and it's not really a safety. Um, but what it is, is a wooden spoon. Everyone's got to have a wooden spoon. I don't know what it is about a wooden spoon, cooking with a wooden spoon. Uh, things taste different. It's just, it gets that home cooking feel. So definitely a wooden spoon. I've got many of them um, and love and just use them all. Bump dots. Have you guys have all heard of bump dots? So yeah. Uh, I'm getting a couple of nods out there. Yeah. Yeah. So bump dots, use them in your kitchen as well. Use them when you're trying to identify salt and pepper or any type of spices. Um, bump dots on your on the microwave, on the uh, my Keurig, mm -hmm. Nespresso. They can go anywhere in the home. But I suggest using them on your uh, spices because it definitely does help when you're trying to identify um, what spice is what. Because I've done the sugar and salt. I know many probably have and can relate to this. Sugar and salt. I've mixed those bad boys up. <laughs> in a dish, um, it happens, it happens to all of us. Silicone oven mitts. Now, what I suggest is they have the oven mitts, but I've got fingers on mine. So mine is an actual glove and it's fully silicone and it goes right up to my elbow. That's probably because I've got like freakishly short arms, but it does go up to my elbow, but they are longer. Um, that's great to have longer oven mitts like that. So this way you don't burn your forearm and all that stuff that we want to avoid. Um, and those, and the great thing about this is you can buy them anywhere. And Amazon, right now, Amazon has them. That's where I purchased mine. Um, highly recommend those. Vegetable peeler. Um, oh, a vegetable peeler instead of a knife. So when you're peeling your apples, pears, and I mean, I love that lovely vitamin skin on that, but some people don't. So if you have to peel them, use a vegetable peeler rather than a knife if you're not comfortable peeling it with a knife. What else? So know. many fun things. Yeah. I noticed I was at the CNIB uh, recently and I noticed that there's, because uh, you know stoves now, you can have like an induction stove where you can't really sense where the elements are and you don't really want to put your hands down. I mean, you know you have the silicone gloves, uh, but they're actually these silicone pads, almost like a a margin to tell you where you can actually uh, yes. put your, your uh, I don't know what they're called. Does anybody know what those things are called? Anybody on the call now? Any cooks out there? Anyway, they're pretty cool because at least now you know where you can you know, set, you know, a pot or a kettle or something like that. That's, that's a cool tool that I know yeah. uh, they use it. We have with the, the CNIB. Um, yeah, One that's, more that's, thing that's that my cousin, someone actually, my cousin told me about this. If you're trying to find the, uh, handle of your pot. Using a wooden spoon is actually helpful. There's my wooden spoon again. You just <laughs> tap the side of your pan. So bring it forward, tap the side of your pan, and run it along the side of your pan until you hit the um, the handle of the pot. And that's where you know to grab so you don't sizzle your hand. Mm. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. I, I have I have a I have a uh, a device. You were talking about bump dots. Yes. I have a device that is literally fantastic, which outdoes bump dots 100%. Share, do share. It's called Pen Friend. Have anybody heard of this? Anybody use it? Oh, what is it? All you have to do, it's just a little pin. All you have to do, it comes with a bunch of little dots. All you have to do is take the dot, put it on top of your spices, whatever you want to identify and you take your pen, turn it on and touch it, that dot, it will tell you, and you, I'm sorry, you record what, whatever you're trying to do, whatever you, the name of that particular device or item is, you touch the dot and the pen will repeat exactly what you just said to identify that particular item. 
Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think we did talk about that recently. Tyler, I mm -hmm. think uh, if, if you can uh, comment on that, I remember we had one on a Tech Tuesday uh, a couple weeks back about the pen friend. I think Jeanette actually brought it up. Um, do you remember talking about this? Um, yeah, actually, and all honestly, I brought it up to your attention because John is my client. Hi, John. And uh, Hello, Tyler. He, he told me about it, and that's what uh, got me to bring it to uh, the team's attention. Uh, it, I haven't used the device, but quite an interesting device. Jeanette has used it, and it's something that she um, she quite enjoys. But it's a multicolored label that you can record a audio descriptor of and then just bring the pen to that label, and it will repeat what the audio descriptor is. I actually <laughs> have a link to the um, device on the uh, on the chat here if anyone's curious what it is yes and, and you know you can you can identify you can do the same thing with clothing for example to identify the color of a say a shirt or pants or something you can mm -hmm. use it any 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 item that you can attach a little label to and identify what the item is about it works so now i have the question because i've heard about this but i was never able to find it anywhere where, oh. can, we, where can we get them Oh, you can get them from, uh, what's the, the, the largest uh, blind supply online store? What is that called? Uh, Maxi-Aids? What is it? Here. Oh, Maxi-Aids. There we go. Yeah, so I got the Maxi-Aids up here. Here's the, uh, the, <laughs> the right. Pen Friend 3, which is the third iteration of Pen Friend. Uh, you can see that it does come with the stickers and then this little wand over here. It allows yeah. you to record, update the volume. What types of modes can you get on this pen friend? Modes? Hmm. What do you mean modes? Oh, There's a I, button I, there I, that says oh, mode. Yeah, you, know, you know, I haven't used that actually. Uh-huh. Okay. That's interesting. Well, well John, we're going to have you on one week <laughs> so we can talk about pen friend. Yeah. And get okay. to the bottom of this. <laughs> well, that's cool. That'd be okay. great. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for contributing there. Um, I have a question, Mary. Are you okay taking a, a question? Absolutely. Awesome. Benjamin Bruce Murray, how are you doing this afternoon? I haven't Sir? seen you in a long time. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I just wanted to tune in and thank uh, Mary for being here. And uh, uh, I myself am visually impaired. I'm, I'm an eSight user. Uh, I just recently got a new stove, uh, a gas stove, because mine was malfunctioning, and uh, of course it's been replaced. Ever since I've done this, I find myself cooking about every, well, it seems like every 15 minutes of my life. Well, that's an exaggeration, but it's nice to be able to cook again. I have, um, I have a fear of knives because I was, uh, especially those large uh, kitchen knives, because I was. You know, not to be blunt, I was nearly assaulted with one once, and I just have this fear of using these bigger kitchen knives. It always brings back it always brings back these flashbacks of almost being, you know, hurt by someone with one of those knives. Um, I don't like to use those. Is there any some? Is there something smaller and less, uh, less, uh, you know, shorter, if you will, that you would recommend for a sharp kitchen knife? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, what about a paring knife? So the paring knives are much smaller mm -hmm. and they do just as good of a job, if not better in some cases. Um, I do also, I have heard of using um, a pizza cutter. So the round wheel, a pizza cutter to actually cut your sandwiches or anything if you're not um, comfortable with a knife, but you need to kind of cover a little more real estate than a pizza knife. <laughs> Um, definitely helps. Pizza wheel. This just kind of like cuts through, but a paring knife is, is a good start. Ben, what types of things are you actually cutting? Like, are you, are you cutting, you know, slabs of steak or are you just chopping some, some vegetables? Vegetable chopping, you know, carrots, peppers, onions, uh, tomatoes, uh, things like and that. Have you ever heard of the slap chop? I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the slap chop, but first no, of all, sir. it's got a great video on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, have you heard about this, Mary? I have, I have, I have, and they've done a lot of videos on this. Um, <laughs> and a lot of uh, TikToks as well. If anyone's into TikTok, <laughs> I just discovered it. They're all using the slap shot. <laughs> yeah. You, you can, you can chop anything in it. You can chop carrots, onions, no more tears. Um, nuts, 
Uh, you can make a salsa all in one. You just roll up the cilantro and tomato and onion in there and just give it a good go. Uh, Rosa, have you ever used the slap chop to uh, to make any really um, really delicious salsa? So, <laughs> I have not Sal heard of the slap chop, but I wanted to say <laughs> my VI person um, from Voc Rehab gave me a plastic knife, and it actually oh. cuts and chops. It's a clear plastic serrated knife. Oh, wow. And it's like, it's sharp enough to and cut it, a tomato? Yeah, like, I mean, I don't know that it'll cut a tomato. I don't know if I've done that, but it, it'll chop up stuff and cut stuff and whatnot. Yeah. The one go, that I tried I mean, I can go not. get it. <laughs> uh, sorry, on, Yuval. If I could just uh, blurt in a little bit. and uh, So, oh, first of all, my name's AJ. It's not Anya. For some reason, it's coming up as Anya. <laughs> But um, I would like to say that I can vouch for what Mary said about the uh, pizza cutter. I actually, uh, I go to school up in Guelph and I live in a house without my parents. So obviously I don't have all the utensils that I might need to make my food and uh, live my life. But uh, we actually don't have many knives. So I use a pizza cutter to cut my sandwiches and cut my chicken. So I can vouch and say that it does actually work. Mm -hmm. It, it's the cleaning though of the pizza knife you know that or the pizza cutter uh, it's you get, you get like a moving part wash yeah, it. is it is it dishwasher safe Ben? you can wash it in the dishwasher i don't have one here in the uh, uh apartment that i live in and uh but uh, sorry you can hear the washer my newly repaired washer i'm the repair guy's uh best friend this week so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the plumber uh, thanks, AJ or Anya, whoever you want me to, to go by. I'll go um, by AJ. <laughs> sounds good. So, Mary, um, so the slap chop, I mean, that would be a good option. I mean, a lot of people, uh, you know, who, you know, don't want to actually use a knife. I mean, that could be something that somebody can use. Um, There's also the mini food processors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's, give it a bit yeah, of a whaz. Mini food processor is, is a great tool as well. For sure. I, I like to use that for like a soup or anything like that. Cause you know, you have to do like a ton of chopping. So what I'll do is I'll cut the onions relatively small, the celery, the, the garlic, and just throw it in there and then just give it a waz and then you're good to well, go. One of my friends uh, who is legally blind out in Portland sent me a new way out of the blue. Well, I sent her a talking food scale because hers was, uh, you know, acting, not acting right. And it would, you know, shut off, et cetera. So I, I purchased a talking food scale from Maxi Aids and I told, you know, I told her, I said, you know, watch out for a package, et cetera. And she got it. And uh, a few days later, I get a notification All saying, right. I got a sign for this package. And I said, well, I'm thinking, well, I didn't order anything. Well, I get this new wave and uh, I've been having a lot what of What is it? What, hold on. What, what's a new wave? It's a, you, you can grill in it. You can cook. Oh, uh, like a George Foreman grill. George Foreman. Yeah. Yeah, you could, no, I know it. Let me see. You can wave. do all kinds of things with it. I mean, there's different versions of it. Mine, I'm not out of the box yet. So. Oh, okay. So you're still you're still thinking about it. I well, it's there's a lot there's a lot to go on here, you know, so to speak. Um, I can cook <laughs> fair thing. I can cook steaks. Like you know, one thing that Esite has done, it's given me my. Uh, it's given me my ability back to cook. I mean, one thing I do not use eSight, the, the unit for is doing the dishes because of the you know potential of water uh, getting mm -hmm. around. Uh, I always get slammed in the kitchen or by my dad's, uh, my dad's lady friend, you know, oh, you missed a spot. And it's, that just drives my dad absolutely insane. So he does the, <laughs> he does the dishes and I cook. So, I mean- It's a good pairing. <laughs> When I visit home, of course, I mean, I, I, my first night in here, well, I mean, this has been, it'll be a year in uh, August, but my first night in here, I think I made uh, steaks and I've just purchased a, I do also have a George Foreman tabletop grill for my kitchen because I don't have the finances at this time to purchase an outside ga uh, char uh, a gas grill because they're, you know, three to $400 from what I'm researching. Um, those it does wonders too i have a griddle as well you can cook pancakes uh i just love cooking in general period we can see that and that's that's great that you're here and mary is definitely the 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 authority in this and 
I know Tyler, he has a lot to say about this because I know we always have these conversations about air fryers and everything. Uh, Tyler, is there, um, I see your, your hands up. Uh, yeah. Have you used the air fryer at all? Uh, yeah, I, I use the air fryer, I like it quite a bit. I find it inaccessible. Um, I use the eSight to see the dials, but basically it's two dials, one for temperature, one for time. You put the food in the basket, you know, appropriately spray it, stick it in, and there's no on or off switch. It's just on the one I have, it's just to unplug and plug in. Uh, I haven't seen more complex models, but it does work uh, very well and easy to use. Um, the model my wife bought me for uh, my birthday in August. So that was, that was nice. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up as well, um, which we go to the slap chop, one thing that caused me people about, I don't have a slap chop per se, but I have like a, a knockoff version of it. And it does work well for containing the food and chopping it. But there's a, um, a, a, on the one I have, there's a little plastic guard to stop the food from going up into the device. But pieces of mm -hmm. onion stuff still go up in there. And you have to kind of reach up between the zigzag blades to pop it out, to clean it out properly. So that's something to be cautious about, that there are sometimes little pieces with that device when you're cleaning it. It can be a bit of a challenge. Um, another accessible product I wanted to bring up with my low vision, I was always nervous around blenders and reaching into a food processor and handling the actual blades of the device. I kind of wanted something where it was more, um, I could take the blade, remove it completely, set it aside, but not like a little spindle with blades sticking up, but something contained. So when I was a teenager and I started doing cooking, I was using the, um, uh, the version I have called a miracle bolt. So it's a little uh, upside down blender. And so it would have a cup and a blade at the bottom. And I could just you know put the ingredients in, twist the blade on, use it, and twist the blade off, set it aside. And I found that was really VI friendly for me. And I burned out through a couple of them, but just through the place I ended up going to a blender. And uh, I'm okay around a blender. I just know to be more cautious around it. But when I was first starting to cook and get comfortable, I love that little, you know, kind of upside down blender and definitely recommend it for people from a visual perspective. So I've got a yeah, little on uh, cleaning that blender. So instead of having to touch the blades, what I like to do is I fill it um, up halfway with a little bit of warm water and some dish soap. <laughs> peel it back on and uh, yep. run the blender. And it'll, it'll kind of eliminate a lot of those, uh, a lot of the food that's left in the blades. I use that trick. Good tip. Time. Yeah, you do the <laughs> Good same tip. Way. Yeah. <laughs> so that's definitely easier. something I'll do. <laughs> it's all about getting the soak on, you know, you got to get the soak on, you know, put it in a sink, let it sit there for a bit, let it soak, you know, or be if patient. You wash it right, or if you wash it right away, like she said, you, you pour mm -hmm. out your stuff, fill it, fill it and rinse it, fill it with water, put a couple drops of soap, put the lid back on, put it on your machine. <laughs> <laughs> That, that like sounded the, exactly like, like my, my magic bullet. Thank just you. Just how my yeah. ninja sounds right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, now that we're in this uh, quarantine phase uh, where we're at home a lot more, I know I'm eating a lot more, unfortunately, like I'm just near the kitchen. Um, I think a lot of people are doing new things in the kitchen. I know I've taken up baking. I've made some really good apple strudel. Uh, baking different types of cookies, like Miss Fields cookies that I found off of a Pinterest thing. Um, Mary, have you tried to take on something new now that you're at home a little bit more often? I know Italian cooking is your thing, but I mean, have you gone into baking and all that fun stuff? Actually, you know what? I do every different type of cooking and I just add an Italian twist to it. That's my signature. That's something that kind of has an Italian twist to any dish. Um, but so if you're making like tacos or something like that, right? You're making fish tacos. How would you add an Italian twist to that? Switch the cilantro to parsley. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Cover your ears, Rosa. Which works beautifully <laughs> for me because I cannot eat cilantro. I'm one of those people that it's either cilantro. There's no happy medium. You either love it or you yeah. can't eat it because you you get that soapy kind of taste. Yep. Um, but you were mentioning about the Mrs. Fields cookies. Interesting because I just did a copycat flaky. You guys heard of the Vashon cakes um, where they're uh, either Jalui, um, the half oh, yes. moons, or, and there's the flaky, which is like the puff pastry with um, a buttercream. And um, I used a raspberry compote, but I recreated those. 
while I, I had to give them away. <laughs> I was giving them away to neighbors because one, I love my neighbors. They're fantastic. Um, and, and I've been blessed to have great neighbors, but I could not keep them in the house because I couldn't stop eating them. So it was one of those wow. things where they're just really easy to make. Um, so I've been doing, I've been doing that. I've been doing the baking like everyone. Um, everyone was doing the banana bread. So I decided yeah. to do banana nut muffin, right? <laughs> Still the banana, but uh, banana nut muffins, um, which actually I did a segment for, for AMI this week, which will be, oh, I think cool. will be showing up soon. How um, can we view that? Is it, I mean, in terms of the link and, and the website, I mean, Jordan, if you can throw in the link so we can see at least, you know, the site and, and, and read the blog, I think it's really important for the community. Uh, but that's really amazing. i have you ever made a pop tart before? No. Okay, so everyone was on the pop tart train. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mug cakes and pop tarts. Yeah, I failed miserably with mug mug cakes. I, I honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. I tried three different kinds. I failed miserably with them. Um, but I do know people that have had great success. Uh, but I did. I my kind of jumping on the bandwagon was the flaky instead of the pop tart. What else have I tried? Oh, bread. Is anyone, everyone making bread? bread? Tough for me to make bread. I, I, I eat it all. I made this yes. really good challah loaf and um, I'm embarrassed to say. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll tell you. I, there's not that many people here today. So um, I made an entire challah loaf, which is an egg loaf for people who okay. don't speak Yiddish. And uh, it, it, it was braided and it, was, it started off really tiny. It was just like a little baby. But as soon as you put it in the oven, it grew up into an adult loaf of bread. And I did things to that bread. I just, I ate the whole thing. I remember my daughter tried some. She's like, this is really good. But it was gone within 12 hours. I remember I baked it the night and then the next morning I was there still. And I'm not making it anymore for my own safety. Uh, but I made a really nice focaccia. That's a nice easy one. You just get that little you pan out. You just kill it with olive oil and if you have a good olive oil, then it comes out really, really nice. Uh, what kind of bread did you make? I have the only bread recipe you will ever need. And I know those are big shoes to fill, but <laughs> yeah. it's a no need um, Dutch oven bread. And you literally kind of mix up the ingredients, again, wooden spoon <laughs> with a bowl. <laughs> and uh, you just use a spoon in a bowl. And it takes five minutes to whip up the ingredients the night before cover that next morning. So you have to at least let it proof for about eight hours. Oh, okay. Or you can do it up to even 24, but eight is fine. And the next morning you wake up, pop that into your Dutch oven, into the, into your oven, done. That's it. It just bakes and that's your bread. I, I'm wondering if, if Jordan has ever baked any bread in the past. I know he kind of does a little bit of everything, but I don't think bread is his thing. I mean, I always see like stuffed peppers, like almost like, I think it's focus is a bit more Mediterranean, if you will. Like, it's not like, you know, uh, Jordan, do you make pita bread or anything like that? Or We tried our hand at some pita. Um, we made a, a pretty dense sourdough, but bread making is not for us. We don't enjoy it enough. It's much better to just everything else. Let, let's leave the bread to the bakers and uh, go to the store and grab when we can and enjoy it. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's tough. I'll, I'll bake everything. We'll... No, we need to have a bread, a bread group, a bread class. Okay. <laughs> yeah, virtual bread making class. <laughs> yeah. It, I, that, that just sounds dangerous to me, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I'm for it. Uh, I'm not going to be against it. If, the, if it. if it came out on a bill, I mean, here's something that I've always wanted to do. I've, I can't find it anywhere in stores, especially right now during the COVID, but there's something called, it's flour, but it's made of corn. It's called corn flour. And you can buy corn flour and make tortillas masa. just at home. So I say again? Masa, I'll send you some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have some? Is there some in Nevada? Because I would love. You have to go to a, a Latina store. That's what they used to make, like, tamales. Can't, I can't tortillas. find it. All I want to do is make my own corn tortillas. I'll have to see if I can find you some. It'll probably cost me, like, twice, 500 times what it costs to buy the bag to ship it, but <laughs> I'll 
I'll put it in my carry-on when I come to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. So I got to find out where to get that. But I just want to make my own corn tortilla, uh, you know, and, and be able to have like a, you know, like a saw, so like, because everything's flour over here, you know, and flour is, again, we know what flour does. But corn just sounds like it, uh, it gives energy, you know? Doesn't here's a, a bakery store energy. in BC, I think. Florist, F-L-O-U-R-I-S-T. I'm not sure if they'll ship to Toronto, but they may have. <laughs> That's a great name. That's a great name that they, <laughs> for a mill. <laughs> Florence, Amazing. And have you tried bulk corn? I, 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 I don't know. I, mean, I haven't gone. I don't go to bulk barn unless I'm buying like <clears throat> bulk, like candy and stuff like that. Or going like for a birthday party. I gotta buy like a bunch of loot bags or something like that. But I haven't gone there for corn flour. Do you think they have that there? They might, and they might during now during COVID, they might actually have them pre-packaged, like pre pre-measured for you. Mm. Yeah, because I think I mean, if I'm not mistaken, you take the corn the corn flour, you add water, and then you're done, right? I mean, a little salt, maybe a little salt, definitely salt. But, yeah, <laughs> I'll ask my mom. Salt to get you a recipe. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> Cool. So Mary, what types of projects are you working on now? I mean, what are you, what are you looking forward to in the future? I know it's kind of crazy with what's happening right now. So uh, are you working on anything? Uh, yeah, actually, some have been put on hold, unfortunately, until, um, of course, until our world is, is some, has some type of normalcy. Um, I have been working, so right, I do have a podcast that I want to mention, uh, Kitchen Confession Podcast, and it is open to anyone who loves to talk about food, doing some great things in the kitchen, who wants to come on, reach out, email me, um, message me on social media. I'd love to have everyone on. Um, I'm then, in. You got me. In? Okay, perfect. <laughs> Done. Done. Um, and I, I'm working on another project with, it's called, um, I don't know if anyone's watched the first one, which was A Taste of the Prairies with again, accessible media. Um, whereas I'll just, I'll go into different um, cities and discover and uh, learn about traditional foods, things that are going on in their city, food related from my perspective. Um, the one that we're working on now is a taste of Canada, which unfortunately is gonna have to wait until things get oh. settled in a little bit. But it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I still do the radio, uh, doing some cooking segments for them, uh, working on another project that I can't talk about yet, but I would love to share with everyone. It's another um, food-related engagement where everyone can just kind of hang out, cook, and I will definitely pass that along when I can speak, about, talk about that. Yes. It, when we have you back on on East Side together coffee chat for sure we can definitely do that i, I have a question for you for you mary um just curious i mean so i'm not visually impaired myself what makes a recipe i mean i understand fonts and whatnot but what makes a recipe more accessible than others or what websites um do you look to or recipe books that you look to that are fully accessible from start to finish so i don't have any recipe books that I, I look to for in terms of um, font and, and different types of uh, accessibility features. I do use the internet a lot for inspiration. Um, mm. So, and when it comes to, to cooking in terms of accessibility, uh, accessibility, I'm sorry, rather, when I do the cooking segments or I do my shows, I explain everything. Whereas a lot of other um, outlets do not have that feature where they're explaining exactly what it is that we're doing. Um, so if you, you can listen, watch to one of the episodes and it'll explain step-by-step step what's happening. So you don't necessarily have to, it's basically TV for radio. So you don't really have to see something in order to cook along with us and with me. Um, I really don't know. I'm going to be honest of anyone else that's really doing it that way out there. Um, I feel bad. I want to kind of share resources, but I wish I had some for you guys. Uh, I would recommend the Jamie Oliver app. Uh, I know that fantastic. I'm not a, I'm not a cookbook guy. And as much as I love seeing those cook, like my wife is 
big into cookbooks. And we have a whole kitchen full of cookbooks. You know, every book ever made, Nigella Lawson. Uh, is it green? No. Ina Garten, Gardner, oh, whatever her name. I've got tons behind me. It's you just, got those. Yeah. We've got Jamie, uh, Jamie Oliver, everybody. You know, like she, we've got like a whole thing uh, in the kitchen. For me, I just, I'm an app guy. And I like having my phone or my iPad nearby. It's light. It's got everything in there. I don't like websites. I like apps that are dedicated to cooking because then you have the step-by-step -step cards and you're just basically swiping through. And it's just so much easier. It's just all there. You have all your ingredients in front of you and that works really well. And if you've tried like the equivalent of Blue Apron uh, in Canada, I think it's called Good Food or Make Good Food or something like that. That's also really cool. I've actually kept the cards. So once you order the food and it's like, oh, you're gonna try like coconut chicken or something like that. And you make this beautiful meal. You're like, oh my God, I don't need the food. I don't need them to get me the food. I just keep the card. And it's like really accessible. You have it nearby. And uh, I mean, it works really well. And the food just tastes amazing. I mean, or at least the recipe tastes amazing. But have you found that the fonts vary on that? Or, or I mean, the reason why I like online, like you mentioned, um, the apps, because you can change the size of the font. You can change the color of the screen to suit what you need. Um, whereas when we're talking about a lot of cookbooks, there aren't many that are very accessible out there. Um, and that's why I kind of lean towards, and I agree with you, towards the apps and the online. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, for me, I, as someone who's cited, um, it, I, I prefer that because, and I guess this is kind of like our, our friend Rosa here from eSight, uh, you know, she said it best, is like, you know, people who are cited, they're just lazy and they're using accessible technology, you know, just to not have to read and not have to, do. so uh, for me, it's just, I, I have the ability to, to do voiceover and do all the things that I, I, I can get Siri to read things out for me. So for, uh, that's kind of what I prefer when you're reading a, a, a cookbook. It's like you have everything in there. And like you said, it's, it's just static. That's all you get, you know? And, and I mean, like you mentioned, you can flip it to, to match the contrast that you like the, the most, if you like white on black or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that is definitely something that I would, you know, uh, focus on. Um, but I mean, what apps are you using in addition? I mean, you said you like Jamie Oliver? Love Jamie Oliver. <laughs> love, lots of love for Jamie Oliver. I am using, I use my Google Home um, quite a bit, quite a bit. And the great thing about it is because with Google Home, again, it's voice activated. Um, you can pause it. You can rewind on it. You can reread an ingredient to you. Um, so I found that Google Home is extremely helpful. Um, how, how are you using it? Are you, I mean, for me, my Google Home, I'm just using to convert things like how many teaspoons in a cup or, or whatever. Um, can you actually get recipes on your Google Home? Yes, absolutely. So for so example, you, yeah. Okay, so what I do is let's say you want an easy one to do and you, anyone who has Google Home can try this. Ask for a recipe, just say Google, uh, hey, no, okay, Google, I'm getting Siri and Google now mixed up. Yeah, don't, yeah. Let's just call them something else on this call because we have uh, a bunch of people go here off. who are, everything is gonna go bananas. I'm glad that a lot of people are on mute. <laughs> uh, Cosmo, sorry about this. He has all of them. So, <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to say the command, but then just ask for um, a recipe for buttermilk. And buttermilk's an easy one. It'll tell you, you know, do you want to start with the ingredients or do you want to jump to the instructions? And then it'll say, once you get the next, when you want the next ingredient, just say next. Um, so you can actually follow along the recipe using your Google Home. Oh, I'm going to try that. Yeah. It works, it works well. What was the last recipe that you cooked on the Google Home? Because I, the, the thing I have is, you know, sometimes I ask the person who works for Amazon that lives in my uh, smoke alarm and I say, uh, blah, 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 um, you know, order some toothpaste for me. And then it orders it for you. But then what arrives is like, you know, the one for people who have sensitive teeth or whatever. But um, do you get the same sort of anxiety when you ask Google, like, hey, give me the, the recipe for focaccia bread? Where do you, like, how does it tell you what source? Do they give you a list of all the different yeah. sources? So it'll, oh, it'll actually amazing. specify that it's going to give you the recipe from such and such source um, or this website. Um, and if you want to continue with it, you say continue. If not, it'll give you the, it'll give you the option to go to the next. Or they'll tell you we found one recipe matching what you're looking for. And they'll always take the most, the, the best recipe, so I guess the most popular recipe. 
um, which is one with, I guess, more Google searches, more SEO, whatever the case is on it. Um, but it, they'll always give you that option. I say they, Google will give you that option. <laughs> yeah. So there's a question here about that. And um, uh, Kelly's asking, is Google Home an app or is it something like Alexa? Um, I, I, it's, a, it's a speaker, like, right? Yeah, it's a speaker and you can get the mini. So you don't have to get that big. If you're limited for space, you can buy, purchase the mini uh, Google Home and just hook that up near your kitchen. And I have my music going and then I get my mm -hmm. recipes or you get a measurement, a conversion of a measurement or even cooking times you can check. You know, like let's say you're making pizza and you have everything, you know what to do, but you can't remember what temp to put your oven at or how long to cook the, uh, you know, to, to cook the pizza. Just call it into your Google and it will bring up the most recent recipe. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. I know I have one that acts as my doorbell in my house, um, but that, that's a great idea. I'm definitely, definitely going to try that. Um, so do we have any other questions uh, today? Because I'm just looking at the time right now. I don't want to take up uh, your day, Mary, but I mean, let's just, I mean, I hope there are some questions out there for, for Mary. Oh, um, <laughs> again, if you go to the chat, there's a bunch of links in there that Jordan threw in, uh, one to Mary's podcast, also one to the a AMI um, documentary section, uh, really great source of information for you. Um, and again, we have eSight here as well. So, I mean, if you want to speak to anybody here as a coach, uh, we're here for you. Uh, any questions from uh, anybody out there? Yes, th this is John. Uh, I have a question. When I had uh, good vision, I used to rely quite a bit, especially when I baked something, say, uh, uh, steak, chicken, whatever, on the color of the food. That would tell me everything I need to know how, whether the, the, the whatever item was cooking was done fully and to my, uh, to my taste. But now, uh, being able to decipher what color is uh, my steak uh, or chicken or whatever, I can't do that anymore. And that's very frustrating because I used to rely on that so much. How do you, how do you overcome that deficiency, something, a deficiency like that now? That's a really good question. Um, two things become your friends, your fingertips and I use honestly a Google home and I use the timer on my stove. The reason why yeah. I say that is because time is key. When, when you can't visualize that, that coloring that every recipe has, you know, like sear till it's cooked till it's golden brown. But mm -hmm. what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, time is, is very crucial for you. So if a recipe says saute for five minutes or until golden brown, go five minutes. But then what I want you to do again, don't, burn yourself or try not to is you need to touch your food um us visually and low vision or blind cooks we definitely do love our food because we get hands-on with it um it's it's usually by the touch so a steak there's a cool trick that someone actually told me about if you fold your fingers over um and your fingers are tapping the that kind of i don't even know what it's called does anyone know the puppy part of your thumb that yes, kind of Jordan, Jordan knows exactly what that's called. I would call it a thumb pad. I would call it the thumb pad. pad or the... It's, it's medically called a thumb pad, according to Jordan. Thank okay. you, Jordan. So the medical <laughs> and if you press your fingers, I think it's, Jordan, have you heard of this? Uh, if you press two fingers, it's like medium rare. One finger is, is um, well, is rare. So what I've heard, so if you do pinky to thumb, that's well done. If That's you do it. ring finger to thumb, it's medium well. If you do um, uh, ring finger and middle finger, sorry, if you do um, just middle finger, middle finger. It's medium. If you do middle and um, index, it's medium rare. And if you do just index, it's rare. And if you do nothing, it's raw, it's blue. Raw. Okay, okay. Jordan, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you're trying to, uh, to say with the, sure. using your finger and your thumb, but let me, let me go back just one step uh, uh, previous to this. When the food is really hot, like taking a steak out of the oven, uh, I, don't, I don't see that as a technique that would be advisable. Uh, Mary? Well, you, no, 
sorry, when it comes to the steak, the reason why I asked Jordan about that technique is because you can also do it with um, a fork, um, a butter knife where you tap the, the top of the steak. So if you take right now, you have your hand in front of you, and you take your thumb, your thumb and your index finger. Okay. And put those two together. And it's almost like um, you're saying, okay. Okay. With the hand gesture for okay. Mm -hmm. Touch at the bottom of your, th your thumb, there's that little thumb pad. The kind of puffy part of your thumb. If you touch that, that usually is an indicator of what a... Um, is a medium rare would feel like and that's usually how you you touch you you test the texture the the give on that steak another way because this is a lot of testing and touching and, and doing all that is get yourself a meat thermometer yeah that i was just about to say that i'm like there's so many you can get a probe you can have that in your barbecue you can just and then the app that's connected to it will just say, oh, your steak is now medium rare. And then, exactly. then you yeah. enjoy sweet steak there's goodness. Barbecue, there's the eye grill. There's a, a lot of, um, you know, user-friendly ones that are for uh, stovetop. And I definitely get a uh, um, meat thermometer. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I'm sure everybody knows that there are talking meat thermometers now. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Awesome, John. Thank you. Tori, it's been so long. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. How about you, you know? I'm doing great. I'm glad that you're back. I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, I know. I've, I've been busy with school and stuff. And it makes sense. It's that time of the year where it's, it's crunch time. Got to get those marks. But oh. I'm glad that you joined us today. You have any <laughs> questions for Mary? I do have a question for Mary. Um, Mary, what advice would you give someone who is visually impaired whose families are I guess like they're they're not really confident in um like so for me it, for instance my family they're they're supportive of the fact that I am visually impaired but they don't really like get me involved in the kitchen because they're afraid oh my gosh you're going to you know, hurt yourself in the kitchen or burn yourself in the kitchen, in which I don't mean to say this to blow it off, like, so what? But it's like, okay, how, how else am I going to learn? I mean, I'm not saying that I want to go out here and burn myself, but, you know, <laughs> if I, if it happens, I know, okay, I came too close to the pot or, you know, all right, I know not to do that again. So I know to use, you know, another utensil to cook. So what advice would you give? Um, what I've had ah. is I've had to learn how to ask for what I need. So everyone's, your family is only interested in caring for you and making sure that you're safe and you're okay. And um, as someone who's visually impaired, I understand that and I appreciate it. However, like you said, you want to learn. So the biggest lesson, the biggest takeaway here is ask for what you need. So if you want to learn something, just ask them and keep on asking until they, they give in because they, they're they kind of <laughs> tired of, of hearing you asking the same question. So I would even go in and because, you know, they're just being very protective and very cautious of you because they love you. Um, I would even go in and just start with, you know, can I help wash the salad and this little salad spinner, something that's really um, not as hands on, but you're contributing and you're in the kitchen with them. Does that sound like something that, that would work? Yes, it does. We're going to try that and see what happens. Because lately I've, been, I've just been trying to like ease my way in without them really knowing it. And right. I just like the other day, like the other day on Friday, I, um, I tried instant, instant grits. Mm -hmm. And which, you know, I, I use the microwave quite well. I can, I can see my microwave. Um, but, you know, I just find like different uh like different like seeing ai and stuff like that like different um apps like you about said earlier because i'm an app person too <laughs> so i um i, I kind of like you know i try to to use different apps but also i use like um my sit my sister and my brother and my mom because they're all sighted so you know i just kind of like try to ease my way in and say hey you know what's 
what is the uh what does it say on this package and i i mean because i can follow directions you know just tell me what it says on the package and you know i'll go from there and just play with play with the kitchen that's <laughs> what i've learned yeah i would i would definitely be persistent <clears throat> definitely ask and go side by side with them cook with them yeah. right <laughs> that makes sense thank you and there's i think time for one last question it was asked here a little bit earlier um so let us know. Um, Allison asks, who's a TVI, uh, what recipes would you start with for students um, as a food blogger? Ramen, craft dinner. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I would take it up a little notch. And yes, do the craft dinner, but do mac and cheese on the stovetop. Don't buy the KB. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, get yourself some macaroni shells and... Uh, how, how do you make your, your macaroni and cheese? Is it sour cream and cheddar cheese? No, I actually do it stovetop and I'll use a little bit of butter, make a roux, so butter and some flour, and right at the bottom of the pot, and then you add in uh, some milk, a little bit of cream, I mix it up a bit, and then just add in some shredded cheese, whichever one you want, or mix the two, and then add your cooked noodles in. Nice and simple. There you go. That that's recipe number one for our student, Allison. Number two, grilled <laughs> cheese. <laughs> grilled but cheese. make a really special grilled cheese, not the regular grilled cheese. Not the regular right? grilled cheese. You want to stuff it with something. <laughs> yeah. Put something up there, kind of like a tomato or like uh, some bacon, if you like bacon. It'll be like, yeah, yeah, the uh, Pop-Tart of the grilled cheese where there's something <laughs> special hidden inside. <laughs> Who knows what it is? Yeah. That's awesome. Mary, thank you so much for today. 